Coming up later on Yorkshire Radio, we've got an evening of delights for you. At 7 o'clock, we travel around looking for the best chippee in Yorkshire. And at 7.30, we cross to the fields for the sheepdog trials. And then at 8 o'clock, I'll be putting a ferret down my trousers. And then at 10.30, we'll be talking to members of the Yorkshire public in Yorkshire, the world's greatest place, and finding out what they love about this incredible county. What do I love about it? Nout! Price have gone sky high. I, I spent £10 on parking today. Traffic was bloody terrible. Fish and chips, that cost a fortune, no good anymore. Bloody sheepdogs everywhere, shitting hither and thither. Well, as for the weather, I mean, look at it, bloody raining. Bloody raining. You can't go anywhere, bloody raining. I didn't mention everything costs a fortune. I hate it here. I hate it. Moving to Spain. Ah, right, bye. Hey up. Welcome to Park Date. How are you doing? We've got a great episode today uh, with someone who I really love. This is the first time I met her, but I don't think it's going to be the last. In fact, we might have her on the uh, on the show again. She was so funny. We met at Woodbury Wetlands, um, which is uh, kind of like a lake with some bridges and some reed beds and lots of wildlife. We saw some birds and we talked about raccoons and things. It was really, really funny. And we talked about Avenue 5, the Armando Iannucci um, sitcom, which she has been in. It is, of course, Liz Guderbach. <laughs> Liz um, came all the way from California just to see me. No, that's not true. She lives in London now. Um, and she will be at the Edinburgh Festival. Um, she's doing her show, Geriatric Millennial all through August at the Pleasance. Go and see it. It will be great. And if you like Park Date, please leave a review and uh, star rating. Tell us what you think at Park Date Podcast is uh, the socials. My socials are at Chris Beanland on Twitter, at Christopher Beanland on Insta. And uh, also on Insta, you can check out my new feed, Christopher Beanland Comedy, where I will be posting some funny videos. That's at Christopher Beanland Comedy. Enjoy this episode. Okay, welcome to Woodbury Wetlands uh, in North London. It's just about to rain, I think. I'm here with Liz. Guterbach. Liz, how are you? I'm really great. Thank you so much. Thanks you did, for coming on. You did so well with the name. Was okay? It was perfect. Guterbach. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Coachella, uh, Coachella so, influencer accent. It's perfect. Yeah. Who are you wearing? Um, I... <laughs> <laughs> ASOS. Yes, amazing. <laughs> a little bit of ASOS over ASOS. here. ASOS. Yeah, yeah. I mispronounced it. ASOS. ASOS. <laughs> getting in there with the accent and stuff. But yeah, I'm doing so great. This is one of my favorite places. Yeah, this is a nice place, isn't it? We're talking about nature. Um, parks are great, but this one especially is kind of more like a nature reserve. There's lots of rare species of birds and animals and things, isn't there? So yeah, yeah and- you can... Yeah, I feel like you're at, at one with nature. Exactly. And around the other side of the reservoir, I saw on the way here, they have like a, a little chalkboard where people have put up which birds have been sighted today. Oh, awesome. And I was a little sad they didn't have all the names, like their their proper names. Yeah. Like as in like, this is Barry and this is, yeah, that's really stupid. They but should do, right? They should, exactly. like... Here's Pauline, yeah, the parrot. Yeah, she's lived here for 25 years. Exactly. She She's got 150 want, children. She doesn't want you to take any pictures. Exactly. Um, <laughs> but no, there's really... This is one of the best places in the world because you could just watch the birds sort yeah. of land and take off and swim and do all the things that birds do. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> cool. I actually saw a guy with binoculars, so there's some mm. serious... Serious bird watchers come here as well. Serious bird watchers. I always wondered if I would get to an age when I would be really, yeah, when I would want to watch birds. I don't feel like I'm calm enough yet. I feel like I'm, 
I'm at the age when, like, if somebody's made me walk to meet them really far, I go, oh, don't worry about it. Need to get those steps in. Yeah. Well, like I did today. Yeah. yeah like, that's that's the age that I was thinking about that on the way here. I was like, it's fine. I have to get my steps in. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Did you, when you were a kid, did you like birds and animals? Were you kind of into, into them? Like, I have a very young niece and she already loves dogs and animals yeah, and things. Very much. I actually, in my family, um... I was sort of known, they didn't call me the dog whisperer because I don't think the, I don't think that term had really been out, the, the movie The Horse Whisperer wasn't out yet, so yeah. it wasn't like in the public lexicon, but anyway, my aunt and uncle had a really crazy dog named Posey, Posey. and when I was, she was an amazing dog, but yeah. she was, she went nuts whenever anybody would come in the house, and I remember, you know, I was like nine or ten, and any time we'd come over, I would just be able to almost instantly calm the dog down that's a very good talent yeah my family were just like okay this is either amazing or she's possessed like we don't know (laughs) but um yeah no i love animals so much and i think one of the best things about because i used to live nearby the the reservoir Mm -hmm. one of the best things about living near here is it doesn't feel like london like you can see the high rises and stuff around it but you just get to come and commune with nature yeah, a bit. Yeah, it's really nice, isn't yeah, it? Exactly, it's really nice. exactly, yeah. You were saying about COVID as well, weren't you? It was yeah. Very nice. I came on some walks around here as well. It was, yeah, kind of nice to feel like you had a bit of an escape. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah it's that's really the, important. Yeah, and that's uh, like the power of, yeah, the power of... The power of nature. The power of nature. Come on, <laughs> say it in an American accent. <laughs> the power of... If you go, nature. like, yeah, the power of nature. nature. Amazing. You did it. This is amazing. This is perfect. I love it. Isn't it, isn't it true? I, I, I think I was mentioning about David Attenborough. Isn't it true that those David Attenborough nature shows are quite popular in America now? Do people watch them there as well? Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. I feel like they, you know, I think David Attenborough is probably on par with the Queen. Um just in terms of blanket popularity yeah and and nature shows nature shows in the u.s you know sweeping anything with sweeping like uh photographs of of landscape we're gonna be all over it because because mm-hmm. we've actually seen that like yeah. it, it's the whole the country's so big we're just like yep give me a sweeping landscape and have somebody uh, with some gravitas talk over it. We're going to be into it. Yeah. We're going to be totally into it. He's got such a memorable and unique voice, hasn't he? Gorgeous voice. I yeah. wish I could do a David Attenborough impression, mm. but, you know, can he be impersonated? The answer is no. No. <laughs> no. He's too good. I once, too good. I once talked to him. No way. In, it's a, a weird claim to fame. In my previous life as a journalist, I once had to call him and get a quote from him. Uh, and I phoned what uh, on like car insurance or something <laughs> or it's like David I need some help exactly. I, can I please get a quote exactly yeah. how much will my car insurance be I called him yeah, yeah. he said um, how many miles is on the yeah, car yeah yeah the whole what's thing, the age yeah. of the car exactly. and, then he, and then he told me yeah how much the car insurance would be <laughs> but yeah so it was, <laughs> he answered the phone he said his phone number in his voice oh. uh, you know like old do you remember your parents used to? Yes, I know exactly would, what you're talking about. You're like, the phone, they'd say the um, number of the. 6270135. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what he did. This is the Guterbach 6270135. Right. That was like our. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, that's so sweet. It was very sweet. He was very, very friendly. Oh, um, yeah. I'd imagine he'd just be the loveliest man. I think so. Yeah. I think so. It'd be great if he was your grandfather or something. It would be amazing. It? I would love that. Yeah. I think he would be deeply disappointed in me. <laughs> <laughs> But I would love it. I don't think it'd be great for him, but I'd love it. Yeah. So what have you done? I've I've saved the entire world <laughs> and educated everyone about the planet and nature. What have you done with your life? Well, I <laughs> this and that. <laughs> learned to be somewhat funny. That's it. Yeah. Which is still it. very useful. <laughs> it's still very it useful. Is. I suppose so. But yeah, David Attenborough. Yeah. Yeah. I think he'd love this place. He would love this place. And actually, he? you know, weird thing, around the way they're building this big housing complex and for a while his name was on it. Oh. As like an endorsement, David Attenborough endorses this housing complex, right. which is right next to Reserve. Mm-hmm. And I think he may have taken his name off it. Okay. Maybe because he's like Hmm, buildings next to a nature reserve. Maybe not. Yeah. Now, this will all have to be verified. I don't know. But his name was definitely on the 
like construction um like uh, a yeah. billboard thing and interesting we'll, well find out what we'll find out what's going on yeah leave it with me liz oh i love it i'll investigate journalism <laughs> yes i'll investigate good uh, and by investigate, I mean I'll look on Wikipedia. Which later is great, yeah, 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 and yeah text of course. You. Oh, great, 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 great. Yeah, that's fab. Um, but yeah, that, I could see that happening in Britain. And one thing I like about America is national parks. Yes. And I think that's one of my favourite things about uh, a, a deeply problematic but 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 amazing country that I love. Yes. Uh, but the national parks, I think, are just so great, aren't they're they? And they're so big, and I love the uniforms that the oh. national park rangers wear and they park rangers great. are badass they look great they're nice people mm-hmm. you've got to you know you've essentially their training is intense and you've got to be able to be alone for long periods of time and they yeah. are conservationists exactly. they're incredible i love the national parks i think some of my favorite memories as a kid were in um uh, yosemite yeah which is one of the best places in the it's world it's so nice isn't it yeah when i went to yosemite i was such a tourist there were a lot of raccoons oh. in, in Camp Curry, uh, and I was very excited about seeing the raccoons. And all the Americans were like, oh, raccoons are pests. No, they are. Um, am you I allowed to say them. a bad word? Yeah, say They it. are bastards. Yeah, They're you can scary, say that. scary bastards. I thought they were cute. Which is great. Did you feed them? <laughs> no, Tell, I, I was, I was no. told not to, but I, I kind of wanted, wanted to, like, to pet them, and I wanted to, like, share my dinner with them. But... I tell you what. I was on a camping trip. It was me and my cousin. I was, um, my younger cousins were probably about 13 and we were there with her mom and their Girl Scout troop and we had just gone on this camping trip. It was really cool. Right. Well, we accidentally, bad Girl Scouting, left some food out. Girl Scout cookies? What, uh, well, I, well, <laughs> we'll just go with it. Yes, they were Girl Scout cookies. We'd left them out on accident and we, um went to hike or do something and then we came back and the place had uh it was on a park bench just like this one and there were about 10 raccoons on this park bench eating and eating and eating the food on the table and the yeah so so i was like oh come on this is fine i'm just gonna go shoo them away and my cousin was like no no, you don't do that. It's don't. Just let them have it and then they'll go away. I was like, come on. They're little raccoons. They Okay, they look like little robbers, but they have no clout. They right? look like little, little yeah, robbers. Like they little look robbers. like they've gone to rob a bank. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> they look like little robbers, but they've got no clout. I'm going to march over there and get rid of them. And so I march over there. I shoot, like I start making all the shoe noises and one of them looks right at me, straight in my eye, goes <laughs> and starts running towards me and I just ran away. It's like <laughs> raccoons are crazy. They are pests. They're adorable pests. But to me, I think they seem so cute. I but know. Maybe that's, it's maybe a if shame. I had to live with, the, if they were always breaking into my house and trying to yeah. steal my... Mm, mac and cheese yeah well i mean that would be dreadful well but well, how do you feel about like um uh magpies um how do you feel about magpies? indifferent you feel indifferent i kind of like foxes but foxes. people say foxes are kind of like a pest but why do you like foxes i don't know I, th- I feel like i sort of i feel an affinity with them they're survivors yeah yeah you you know you walk home at night and you see them and yeah. they're just sort of they're there they're kind of they have distinct voices, yeah. you know, terrifying sometimes. So but when they're know. having sex, yeah, does, I know it it's it's a classic trope. <laughs> like a, I don't want to take it there, very, but you know what? We can't. They've brought this upon themselves. Okay, they made noisy. it very, very, vo- very vocal. Yeah, but I think are they having fun? It's I, a moot point. No, I. It's just you know only they could say, mm. only they could really say. But with magpies, I find it very interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that until I moved here. I didn't know that, like, apparently I have to greet magpies. That was a new thing. What's, I don't think I know that. So it's Has the, someone been pulling your leg, Liz? No, no, it's a real <laughs> thing. I promise there are going to be people listening to this going, yes, absolutely. Other people are going to go, what? No, but it's from the... Uh, there's a magpie right there. I'm just going to wave at him. Oh, um, it, that actually is. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Okay. Hi, hey, magpie. buddy. Yeah, Good. Yeah. And we just do that around. is because of the rhyme, right? Like, it's a bad, bad luck to see only one magpie. Okay. Right? So you wave at him yeah. to stave it off. So it's like one for sorrow, two for joy, three for a girl, four for a boy. Like, that's the whole oh, thing. Right. So it's like yeah, people... Yeah. 
people greet magpies and they do it as like a reflex. I have one, my friend Jessica uh, does a salute. <laughs> she salutes the magpie and says something like, um, hello, Mr. Magpie, Mr. Magpie, sir. Right. And she says it out loud. Okay, so very formal. Very yeah. formal salutes. Um, my other friend Louise says, hello, Mr. Magpie, I hope your wife and family are well. <laughs> Right. You think I'm making this up, but it's absolutely it. true. It's absolutely true. So yes, I agree. So very important to do that. I greet birds now. I don't know why I've never been taught that before, but now I know. So this is good. Yeah. this is a learning experience. You're never going to be the same. I bet David Attenborough greets magpies. He would, right. Okay. We, I bet he does. We'll, we'll call him later. Yeah. We'll ask okay. Him about that. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say as well on the subject of raccoons? We don't yes. talk about raccoons all day, but I think maybe one of the reasons that I was quite into raccoons was mm. um and maybe we'll maybe we'll talk about this as well with your edinburgh show yeah. but i think when you get a little bit older <laughs> nostalgia <laughs> becomes a very big thing and <laughs> i'm very nostalgic for a cartoon called raccoons do you remember that cartoon liz so it was a canadian cartoon i loved it so i don't remember it i have heard um and seen uh, pictures of mm -hmm. it and I think watched maybe a little trailer but I yeah. know it was like really popular over here wasn't it? It was very popular over here yeah, yeah. It, it was shown on Saturday mornings right. and people watched it in I guess the sort of mid to late 80s yeah. and it was actually a very very um, I, I would say it was quite a highbrow cartoon right. there was a lot of like big issues in it <laughs> so the raccoons are kind of in environmentalists they were trying to save the evergreen forest um this was... from speculators oh my... cyril sneer was always trying to like I build mean, condos in the what evergreen a name forest. with a name like cyril sneer you're born to do mm -hmm. bad things right exactly yeah he... wow normative deter determinism in action it's true and it's like okay so pixar films often have a big moral and stuff but yeah, they like do, don't for they? these and and that's that's so great but these 80s cartoons as well like captain planet did you have captain, captain planet? planet of course yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah i mean environmentalism was mm -hmm. everywhere yeah. the Hanna barbera people just absolutely loved it they're like well, if we're gonna make these animals talk we're gonna make them talk about would you mean like issues. yogi bear yeah well okay maybe <laughs> not although he didn't have a good relationship with park rangers no I'm he, afraid no, to he say. didn't did he no. he was a, he was a naughty bear, he was a stealing, naughty bear. <laughs> stealing picnics yeah from, uh, well, it was, that was Jellystone Park, wasn't it? Oh my gosh, good memory. Yeah, not Jellystone. Jellystone. Well, Jellystone. Yeah. I don't know, some parallels, <laughs> surely. This is really funny. But if you think about it, like, who was on whose territory? Yeah, you know? right, exactly. Yogi yeah. Bear. He'd yeah. been there for a longer time. He'd been there for a longer him time, his, I'm sure. Him and his kin. You know, but maybe Boo Boo could have been the go between. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Boo Boo. <laughs> Yogi, I was talking. I was talking to him the other day about how yeah, I'm sure we won't get sued for this, but how essentially all bring this it on. You call David Attenborough; he'll help you out. Be fine. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we, I feel like we always need lawyers for these episodes. Yeah, yeah. But um, there was there was kind of a, um, a a generic setup at play, wasn't there? Yogi and Boo Boo, Fred Flintstone and Barney Rubble. Yeah. That kind of like. The, the guy hero and the sidekick. And the sidekick. Yeah, You've got to have exactly. one. You don't. You don't have a sidekick? Um, no, I don't have a sidekick. I Maybe I need either. to get a sidekick who's half my height. That's a good who could idea. Who come around with me. It's a really good idea. And uh, we could get into some hilarious scrapes together. Yeah, hijinks. Yeah. How about a raccoon? Right. Yeah. A raccoon. I'll dress him like a human. Train them. <laughs> we'll, we'll walk around. Exactly. When we go to the supermarket, no one will bat an eyelid. Not at all. The I thing mean, is, you could walk through you could walk through Hackney with a with a raccoon dressed in human clothes, and people would just say, "Oh, like, people would love it." Fine. People would absolutely love it. You'd yeah. be a TikTok TikTok star, right? Then you'd have to explain to the raccoon that you're not just friends with him <laughs> for his like for views. Really, right, exactly. that'd be you know. It would, it would, yeah, we would have to say it would, this was a genuine friendship. Yeah, that obviously. meant it meant something to both. It of means us. something to both of you. Now, there's exactly. a little robin that has come. There really is. is so sweet. I love this. This is the most nature we've ever had in any of these oh podcasts. Oh my gosh. The robin looks really friendly. There's two of them. Is, there, there's an, right. is that a robin? Yeah, it is. They're so sweet. That one looks a bit more disheveled. Yeah, that one looks like he's been in London for a little too long. <laughs> exactly. He's like, I need to move to the suburbs. Yeah. 
<laughs> he might have been at Glastonbury. It looks like he's, yeah. <laughs> it's like he's had quite a rough, rough time. Are Very they a rough. couple? I think they, they might, might be. be. Oh my God, Mr. Young and Mrs. Love. Robin. That's really That's cute, so cute, isn't it? Yeah. She's having a hard time, though. <laughs> you know, he's, he's not pulling his weight. No. He looks great, but he's doing nothing. Right. <laughs> right. Re- yeah. Remind you of anyone? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, you know, we're talking about these cost- uh, cartoons and nostalgia. I think it's, you know, you kind of look back on things a lot, don't you? Yeah. When you get a bit older, you kind of like reminisce a lot and that becomes, uh, you know, there's a lot of Insta feeds I follow where there's, there's kind of yeah, shows. Just nostalgia. Yeah, or things you bought that you remember, yeah, and it's yeah, kind yeah. of it's kind of interesting to think about that, isn't it? Do you think like is there a certain point where you think about uh, maybe the past more than the future or something? Is it like it's really interesting when you it's become like, thirty? You're like well, okay. Well, I mean, it's it's crazy to me as well that thirty is viewed as uh, if you think about like if you're seventy, yeah, you you are definitely looking back maybe more than you are forward i'm 41 and i'm going i'm <laughs> technically maybe not hopefully life expectancy is a bit older than 80 but it's going down in the uk is it but going down it is unfortunately after oh covid and all that stuff i know not i'm keep it fun ladies keep it fun <laughs> but, but basically we're all going you know, we're, to die it's all i mean really soon. yeah well well okay maybe I not thought really Google soon, we're but, gonna make us live forever isn't that well the... i'm afraid to say they don't have our best interests no heart necessarily what might be a revelation for you (laughs) dropping the big truth bombs today but but you know at 40 i'm going right i'm not young i'm not old i i am young relative to other people we both look young we both thank you yes we do oh well you are we've got good genes yes we we're doing great but i yeah i do i am looking back more certainly than i used to but i'm also maybe appreciating i think i look back at back on things more with appreciation Mm. and nostalgia makes me happy um you know revisiting some of those cartoons or like thinking gosh i didn't used to be so stressed or have to do so much stuff um i look back on that and makes me happy but like i i like the idea of sort of leaving that stuff in the past as well yeah and sometimes i feel like um yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to. I'm glad that that stuff happened. I'm glad that I had my childhood and all that, but I don't really want to be back there. Yeah, necessarily. There's an element of that, isn't yeah. there? Yeah, I think when you're really 30, good. you get it in your head. You're just like, oh my god, I have to have everything figured out, and I can't, you know, and I've got to be an adult now, and blah blah blah. And that's sort of true, but like you have so much. Hopefully, you have so much of, so much more living to do. Yeah. After Let's- that. You know? the, look, the look that Liz made on her face when she said so much living to do is kind of a combination of like it's like humour and pain and sadness <laughs> and sadness like, so you have so much more living to do I just get I'll, I'll take know. a photo of you making that pose <laughs> and we'll, we'll, put, we'll put that up but Liz when you were coming up with uh, so your, your show uh, Geriatric Millennial which yes. you're going to be doing in Edinburgh when you were coming up with material for that show okay. did it kind of change your view of maybe aging and life and youth and nostalgia were you kind of thinking about different things yeah i was absolutely thinking about that i think that um the generational um i guess conflict that we seem to have it made me sort of go but generationally speaking each generation will have experienced some significant events ours most recently would probably the be the, the Kardashians yeah <laughs> um, basically a scourge that we cannot get rid of no I mean let, let's 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 be real they are everywhere but yeah they I, I think there will be big events that we've all experienced together yeah. some some more traumatic than others for sure but I just find it interesting like labeling generations as certain things at what point do we start saying right? This generation was this. This generation is that. Ge- millennials are are seen as these very self-centered, egotistical people who live with their parents mm. still. And um, Generation Z people don't want to be seen as millennials because they're just like they're not cool and yeah. we're not that old. And 
I don't know. There's all this, like, it, it did make me think, why is there so much intergenerational conflict? Is that something that sells? Seems like it. Mm. It seems like um, it certainly makes more headlines and it makes it exciting if other generations hate each other. But if you look at things like there will always be an older generation saying to a younger generation, you're too much, you're getting it wrong. The past was always better. And I'm like, oh, crap. Am I at the age where I'm going, (laughs) I remember the good old days when there were raccoons on TV and I could go wherever I wanted. You know, I'm like, oh, Jesus. So, yeah, in thinking about this show, it's like, I, I thought, well, what, you, what are the things that join us together more than separate us? And it sounds cheesy and very American, but you know what? I'm cheesy and very American. And I'm also, you know, I've got some of that British cynicism yeah. as well. Um, I know what sarcasm is. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's nice to, to have a bit of a longer format to talk about these things and to see people's faces when you say... Oh, millennials were born between 1981 and 1996. And the look of horror on some people's faces going, oh, shit, I'm a millennial. I didn't know it. And other people going, I'm a millennial. Oh, right, cool. Yeah. That thing of labeling the generations as well, like yeah. Gen Z, Gen X, yeah. millennial, it's kind of a strange way of segmenting people as well, isn't it? It is, yeah. And I, you wonder if, you know, do people then live up to that identity because yeah. they, they're like oh we are self-centered and you know still live with our parents or you know we're not really viewed through the lens of what circumstances were present in society to make it so that this is our situation mm. market crashes and those kinds of things yeah. it's more like you didn't pull yourself up from the from your bootstraps that's why you don't have any property it's like no, there was a really too many bleak avocado mortgage. toasts. Yes, yeah, there was a really <laughs> bleak mortgage crisis that yeah. was caused by big banks. Yeah, that, that you know that had an effect on yeah. lots of people. But what's also really funny is there's one generation, and I think it's 19. I'm going to get the dates wrong, but I think it's 1901 to 1921, and they were called the Greatest Generation. And I'm going, well, they've already got the best name. <laughs> the Greatest Generation. So what's generation. the point? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, but it's it's all I think for like social scientists they want to categorize things mm. and that can be helpful for understanding maybe human history yeah but for some of us it might feel like oh I'm not just that yeah and actually that is part of what my show became about as yeah. well which is like well I have these labels but I'm not just that but yeah. I am some of that but I'm not just that yeah and it's yeah, yeah it's weird isn't it it's, it's like oh because you're with this cohort mm. then you should have something in common with them but yeah. we don't necessarily do that and also yeah. it, it's strange isn't it Liz like the you know the time that you're born say if you're born in the greatest generation time or baby boomer time yeah. like your life is, is almost kind of determined then by like when you're born yeah. in history I wonder if it's possible people can identify so many different things these days I wonder if it's possible to identify as a member of another generation, do you think I could do that? Do you think, <laughs> I think you could. could I, I could think I you absolutely transition could. to being a member of the greatest generation and identify as that. You, you could be. Do you, you I, would learn have the Charleston. To, yes, yes. You would have to. Um, oh, I'm trying to think of other things that you would have to do. Yeah. My goodness, you would have had to Smoke live through more. a Great Depression. Right. I mean, maybe you. Yeah, it's not funny, but it's. It would be. Yeah, I. Mm, I'm, I'm sort of. I'm just like, oh my god, yeah, the greatest generation. They did live through that, but it's interesting that that those hard economic times hit everybody mm. at some point. Now, obviously, more some more so than others, yeah. but like the way that we deal with things as generations. So the like in, the people in the greatest generation through the Great Depression, they didn't have the same means of communication, so they couldn't have a TikTok that's like, hey, life's pretty hard right now, right? Where we have that communication I mean, their wi- now. Their Wi-Fi was so bad back was then, so wasn't it? Bad. It was so slow. It was so slow. It just took forever. Yeah, forever. Like, they were trying to up- upload a reel back in the 20s. It just took so long. It's like so many donkeys involved carrying messages <laughs> yeah. back and forth. They had to carry the Wi-Fi on the donkey. Exactly. Wells Fargo took the Wi-Fi like, oh by God. hand. You really know your history. I don't you really right. know your history. This I've been is, to university. This is, wow, amazing. 
<laughs> but it's that it's that thing like yeah the way the way that we deal with certain crises yeah. or or the circumstances into which we were born yeah it can define us and then there are definitely going to be people who completely defy that mm. and seem like have you know great uh, ideas yeah. that help lead the way for the next generation yeah. you hope you and hope. Yeah. the geriatric word is quite a powerful yeah. word yes. isn't it and we're kind of you know you, you one feels like we're obsessed with youth and yeah. like what do we think about old people there's going to be so many more old people because we're going to live forever maybe not in the UK yeah, it, sounds yeah. like, <laughs> it sounds like I'm going to be dying next year probably yeah, yeah, yeah. Batten down the um, but, but I, I can't afford a mortgage so it's fine if I die but like maybe in other countries <laughs> they will like in Japan people live for a very long time don't yeah. they and yeah. other places as well yeah. so we kind of have this on one hand this obsession with youth don't we and then mm we've got an aging population and yeah, we have yeah. words like geriatric are quite loaded aren't quite they loaded. did you what did you kind well, of conclusions did you come to well, about that i think it's i think one thing that's very interesting is that the um, word geriatric as you said is very loaded ageism is sort of implicit in in labeling generations right so either your your generation is bad because you're too young yeah and want too much stuff uh, you know, don't want the world to burn. So you're kind of um, talking about those issues. You're out of touch if you're in an older generation. You're boomers. You're labeled completely out of touch. I think um, for some reason, being old, being um, old and with experience seems to be a bad thing. Now, obviously, there are going to be people who's, who are older whose ideas I don't like at all. <laughs> and I'm just like, no, I don't care if you're an old person. I don't like these ideas at all. But what's interesting is, like, we get this idea that at some point we're obsolete, that past a certain age we don't matter. Yeah. And that's an issue. That's a major problem. Like, I know in some cultures and in places like Japan, older people specifically older women are uh shown more respect mm -hmm. the the wizened old woman is a trope that actually exists it does sort of exist here but not necessarily um i think ageism and ageism makes all the other isms worse it makes racism worse it makes homophobia worse it makes sexism worse you know and um i think it's a, i think it's a problem so yeah and some some small way because I only have an hour <laughs> in some small way I do try to talk about that and what it means and you know is getting old a bad thing no it's a it's in some ways you know the way that certain things are going it's a privilege to get older yeah for it's sure privi privilege to be able to get old I, I think getting old in some ways sounds quite fun yeah you know you read about these kind of um old people's communities where they just party all the time the rates of chlamydia through Woo! the roof spring break <laughs> yeah, it's like spring break for old people right <laughs> spring break for old people they just like they're listening to rap music all day smoking blunts <laughs> yes <laughs> we love cool. i mean it's not it's not that bad thing, the thing that's funny is i wonder and especially because i don't think i'm gonna have children mm. i'm thinking about you know what is my community going to be like when I'm older and it's a joke but I wonder if it won't be soon I have you know female friends that it's like if we're say or even if we were living with partners but it's like we should go you know sort of try to get houses next to one another or at least tents like yeah. something next to one another because none of us can afford houses but still it's like you know, could we live in close proximity so we have a community? Or even for those friends of mine who do have children, um, can I be, because I don't have children, can I uh, be more of a resource for them for childcare and that stuff? Like, yeah, thinking about community and older people being in the community. How am I going to, how am I going to age? Like, I don't know. What am I going to do when I'm older? Yeah. I, I don't know. So, yeah, it's like, I want to age well. Yeah. And I want to enjoy getting older, but I don't know in the current climate, say, what that's going to look like. I don't want chlamydia. Um, no one wants chlamydia. I, no one wants chlamydia. 
But I do still want to enjoy myself. Maybe I can enjoy myself without that aspect. It'd be great. It'd be great. Yeah. We can find ways to educate people about STDs and then we'll be fine. We should do that for sure. Great. But yeah, I think these, <laughs> these kind of communities, it, it, it seems to me like you don't have to, um, you don't necessarily have to live in a kind of gross, boring, <laughs> like medical kind of old people's yeah. hospital sort of thing. You can maybe live somewhere a bit cooler. Well, and there's some very real stuff about getting older. Like, I know I, I was lucky enough to know all my grandparents mm. and they were in, I hate to say it, but they were in bad shape by the time they got very old. Right. And it's um, the sort of end of life care. Again, it I know... One of the reasons we don't like talking about getting older is because it, it does go hand in hand with talking about death. Mm. And it's like, we are so into how are we gonna, um, what's my life like right now? Yeah. How am I gonna live the best life right now? And it's difficult to think, well, what's it gonna be like when I'm really old and yeah. maybe ill or maybe not able to move around? Yeah. I think old people are slower. They are um, less in some ways slower but in in one way in many ways that's a good thing like we can learn things from them we can try and support them i think i'm like god when i'm a really old lady i hope people are nice to me yeah you know i'm sure you'll, you'll be a cool old lady <laughs> I, hope so. I like it as well when you you kind of like old people older people have a kind of authority about them don't they oh yeah and there's a very funny uh, this is this is almost like I thought of this segue, but I, I did it. It just comes to me. But like in Armando Iannucci's show Time Trumpet, I don't yeah, know, have you I seen haven't that? watched it. No. It's really good. So he has these uh, very old actors who are playing people who are supposedly older because it's like set in the future. Amazing. So there's an old actor who plays like David Beckham. <laughs> and he will tell a story which is preposterous <laughs> but because it's an old people tell it, an old person telling a story you're like oh this sounds very believable yeah so you can have an old person like as an old person you can tell lies yes. or you can do jokes and people will be like oh what they're oh, saying wow, really? like you have an audience cool. yeah like I think it would be quite fun in a way to be an old person <laughs> young I imagine like young people <laughs> listening to me Finally. <laughs> Finally, people Whatever. are listening to me. Yeah. I think what's... Yeah, it's it, it's interesting because I think we forget that old people... We don't want to think about, oh, old people have real life experience. They've had relationships. They've yeah. had sex. They've had marriages break up. They've had, they've had all this stuff happen yeah. to them. And I'm sorry, just, Liz, you can say bastard, but because this podcast might be uh, might go out in America, you can't say the word sex. Oh, no, that's dreadful. I've ruined it. Because have old it people twice. have held hands <laughs> with other people. Um, yeah, I, I love how I definitely was just like, sex. Oh, move on, move on. Um, but it's like we forget that they are, they have experienced life as well yeah. before us. And all the complexities that come yeah. along with it. I think when I see, I've had in my Edinburgh, my first year I ever did Edinburgh, <laughs> um, with my um, split build partner, Louise Bastock, um, we were doing our show called Sparkle Deli, and there was a lady who wanted to bring in, I think it was her 94 year old mother. And we were like, well, uh, you can bring her, but is it appropriate? <laughs> yeah. And then we asked, we sort of, she sat down in the front row and we said, so we're just letting you know that there's some rude things in the show. Yeah. And she said, well, don't you worry. I've heard it all. <laughs> and we're just like, oh my God. Yeah, of course. Like she's a person. Like what are we, yeah. why are we so worried about shielding this person from things? That's so cool as well. Yeah. She was like down for that. She was amazing. Yeah, yeah. We had the best time. Yeah. yeah. That's brilliant. <laughs> Um, and well, yeah. So talking about talking about Armando, I wanted to ask you before I forget about Avenue Five, yes, Liz, yeah, and what it was like to uh, to work on work on that show. With I mean, Armando, who I think is a great uh, great producer, he's and a genius, writer. and he's a great director. Yeah. And one thing I would say in my brief, very brief time on that show, um, he's a real leader. Mm. And he, that set had so many moving parts, um, so many different sets, hundreds and hundreds of supporting artists mm. that had to be wrangled for all the crowd scenes. And then the guest artists, the guest stars, and then all the main cast, and I was a guest. And it was like, 
this huge machine and Armando was at the top of it. And you know, I walked in on my first day and I'm looking at this, it's a dream, like it's a dream come true. Yeah. And I got to see Hugh Laurie in person, you know, acting and, and just being the legend that he is, yeah. along with a bunch of other amazing people. Like, What was and, he like? Um, you he know what? Nice. He was great. Yeah. He obviously, I only saw him briefly. I didn't properly meet him. I got to meet Rebecca Front and actually rode to set oh, with her. Wow! And an amazing person, yeah. an incredibly generous, wonderful person. Smart, has the most shit hot American accent in the world. Like mm -hmm. she, and she's just a consummate actor professional. Hugh was great, and and watching watching him work was great. I mean, this man has been on sets from time immemorial, basically. And so he was very like straight to the point, you know, let's shoot this, let's get it done so I can go have lunch. And it's like, yeah, because he's been doing it for so long. Whereas I'm just kind of like, this is a dream. I can't believe I'm here. Yeah. And it's nice to see that, you know, they're all just people. They're people who are doing a job and led by Armando, who is so open to collaborating with people. And, you know, this, the, we have a written script but he also hires people who are excellent improvisers, like like Zach Woods, who's also one of the loveliest human beings you'll ever meet. Well, those, yeah, I was going to ask you about that because in the thick of it, and Veep, improvisation yeah. was very much a part of what the actors were bringing to the table. Yes. Was there kind of space to? Yeah, I would say um, certainly. You know, for guests like me, you need to tread carefully and not, you yeah. know, make sure that you're sticking to script. And sure. you know, yeah, you are very much a, a guest there, mm. but there is definitely room to be made and for for people like um zach woods or rebecca um there is always room for them to say hey i or even to just try something yeah. or to say hey i'd like to say this instead of that um and and doing takes that are exactly on script and then doing a few takes that maybe are around script and um it was just it was amazing and for me there were some things that I wanted to try that I was allowed to try or able to try. And it just speaks to Armando's idea that it's a collaborative effort yeah. and it's the best sort of set to be on yeah, because for of sure. that. Yeah. Even for people who are there for a really brief time like me, it's just it's special it felt like a real learning opportunity for me he brings like these great groups of people together um the day-to-day -day was my favorite show when i was like yeah. a teenager i thought it was incredible yeah. he'd got this array of talent and managed to bring out the best of people with quite a lot of big egos yeah. um but also <laughs> incredible talent yeah like rebecca front was great on that oh, and, i mean yeah, great yeah. In the thick of it and stuff and yeah she's just sensational and yeah and you see that there is you know when you're on a set it's long hours and especially if you're a lead yeah. character it is a tremendous amount of mental and physical effort and these people are at the top of their game and so yeah. getting to watch them work and be amazing but also like the humor and the fun that they have it yeah it was just it was great and josh gad was on the um on set with us mm -hmm. and and part of it as well and and um i mean he just absolutely what a talent all of them i mean yeah, yeah. I, I could go on and on but yeah they're just amazing so liz i have a question from uh a, an avenue five super fan <gasps> who i know and the question is this if the series hadn't been cancelled what was the possible direction that it might have gone in do you have any intel oh on God. whether they would have got back or like what would have happened in the future if there was like a season three or I season I mean, four? I think if there was a season three, my hunch, okay, my hunch would be just because of the way that Armando is, I don't think they would ever get back. Yeah. I just don't think that they would. I do think that some of the new leadership would um, come into the fore and, you know, I just I don't think it I don't think it would go well, but I think Ryan would spend a, a a while sort of trying to fulfill his new role and failing again. It would almost be like you just go back to the first yeah. episode. Comedy almost. of failure. Yeah, like, that's the funny thing. That's isn't what it, it is. Right. But it's all a metaphor for the, as far as I'm concerned, you know, the um, the posturing of of recent figures in American government. No. Could How? you believe it? What? I can't believe I made that connection. <laughs> but yeah, it's like the Judd character is so 
so beautifully disgusting. Yeah. And um, that show, like, yeah, I don't see how it could end positively for people, which is a really <laughs> scathing thing to say about, I'm like, where's the country going? Yeah. But yeah. Like, there will be some messes and some triumphs and some things, but yeah. yeah, I don't think they'd get back. They should have done more. I feel like the greatest shows always get cancelled, and do. it's such a shame, isn't it? And what's interesting is, I think what's great is that Armando, even though it would be great to go back, it would be great mm. to see everything play out, um, I don't think he buys into the American model of having shows go on forever and ever. Yeah. So then you have these lovely pieces of great television that stay in their in their sort of capsule and there's something that is sort of rare about that now like i yeah. just watched indiana jones 5 and there's part of how me is that, it i you know what i i don't want to say <laughs> <laughs> but i mean i love those films when being, i was a kid yeah uh, me too and this is the thing is that we bring these characters back and back again and harrison ford obviously is tremendous he's how old is harrison ford he's now? in his 80s no. And I read and a, I read something from a critic and they name. made him do all the heavy lifting. Yeah. Like they did and he does it. He's he's amazing. He's mm. he is amazing. And so many people in the film obviously are great, but I think like it's interesting that we can't sort of let things just be, which I think is a testament to Armando kind of going, you know, it's it's time you know this is the right time to end it yeah. if he does there might be I'm guessing maybe sometime like five years ten years in the future or something like that Armando's gonna be we'll do like a reunion yeah. or we'll do a where are they now sort of episode or two or three episodes that could be really cool it would be but yeah, it? yeah. but like special. the office Christmas special kind exactly. of thing yeah that kind of thing yeah. no when to end it is the big question isn't it it's true yeah. yeah it's true when do you end it okay well on that bombshell maybe we'll end here Liz thank you so much for talking to me today the sun has come out and I hope you've enjoyed hope you've enjoyed the uh, nature reserve I've had the absolute best time Brilliant. thank you so much for bringing me back here no problem yeah. Liz Guterbock thank you so much for joining me today thank you cheers Liz Bye. I hope you enjoyed that episode of Park Date um, there's lots more where that came from and there'll be more in the future as well if you enjoyed it please leave a review um, good or bad make them funny I'll be reading out the best ones and there'll be a prize for the one that makes me laugh the most name check some trees in your reviews and leave them wherever you get your podcast from check out our website parkdate.co.uk and um, if you see me walking around in the park come and say hello I think that was the sound of someone sneezing um, yes thank you bye bye coming up on the next edition of Park Date join me as I interview Governor Ron DeSantis inside an oven. Looks kind of small, but well, I guess if you're ready, I'm ready. Okay, what do we do? Uh, okay, and we just climb inside? Excellent. <laughs>